Hey, what's going on guys? John here, and today I wanted to do a in-depth video review for the Duramax Hybrid Elite XP 13000 EH. So in this video, I'll kind of walk you through a little bit about the setup on this, talk a little bit about some of the things that you're gonna need, and we'll really just go through um, as much of it as possible. So um, I'm gonna start with just walking you through the features of this and giving you some idea of what to expect. Um, so with this particular generator, you have um, basically up to 13,000 starting watts, and then this actually comes down to, I believe, around 11,000 or so uh, for running watts. So that means you could utilize um, quite a bit of power all throughout your house. We have a fairly large property with a detached garage that's actually even larger than our house. So we have two full 200 amp panels. Um, we have a, a extra apartment in our property, and this um, will actually support the entire property. I'll even get into a little bit of um, some of our power usage just so you can see a, a standard day. Um, but let's go through some of the functions of the generator itself. So this particular model actually has um, a dual mode, so you can run off of either propane or gas. There's basically a flip switch um, that you just turn it to um, more or less when you're ready to go on each side. You have a propane inlet here, so if you are gonna be running off of propane, this is where you connect that. This is a light that basically lets you know if there's any maintenance needed or if they've detected carbon monoxide. Typically, you do not wanna run this um, indoors whatsoever. I'm kind of in this unfinished basement space. We just store like pellets and things like that in here. Um, and this is basically a, a part of our basement. So I just keep it stored in here. Um, and overall, I wouldn't even wanna run it in a space like this, obviously with the ceiling and everything like that. So um, you wanna make sure that you are gonna be running this outdoors. I'll also even show you the cable that I got and how I'm connecting all of this. You have your start button here, um, pretty standard. It basically works almost similar if you were turning a key on an engine in a car. Um, you have your breakers here that basically indicate um, whether or not these are on. Normally, um, when you're ready to go with this, you pull off this panel, there's just four screws here. There's a little battery you have to connect the cable and it's almost the similar as a car, but a much smaller battery. You have um, this battery switch, you'll flip this on and then you basically flip the idle control on. You have the circuit breaker set to off here before you're ready to go, obviously connecting everything. You start the motor up and then once the idle control is good, you'll flip, I believe you actually turn this off and then you're pretty much good to go and this will kind of stabilize. You have your large AC um, adapter here. So this is basically your 240 volt. Um, I have a cable here and this one I believe is around 30 to 40 feet. So I connect this in and into the actual generator. And then this side um, actually connects into a 50 amp um, box that I have here in the same space. So this is actually what that looks like. The previous owners actually installed this. I may even relocate this to the outdoors, but ultimately I connect it into here. This then connects into my panel and I'm able to um, use a manual transfer switch on the outside of the house to actually um, get everything up and running and that way we're not getting power from the grid. I'll even show you what that kind of looks like and I'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, beyond that, you have um, your 240 volt here as well. This is a smaller um, 120 volt. And then you have DC protection here. You have a little readout here for the multimeter. You have a DC um, connection here. So if you wanted to connect this to like a car, you've got another 120 volt AC plug here. And then you have your standard um, GFCIs here. So if you wanted to just plug in, I tested this with like a, a, a vacuum cleaner, right? That was a good test. Just plugging it right directly into the generator, you can do that too. On the top, you do have um, a meter that shows you how full the gas tank is. This holds 8.3 gallons uh, of gasoline. Um, I just filled it with about half a tank to start because I didn't want this sitting too long if we don't end up utilizing it. But fairly straightforward, you just spin this off and it's no different than filling up like a lawnmower or something like that. On the other side, pretty much you're just looking at the motor. Um, you do have the oil fill. This will take um, roughly about, you know, it's like, uh, this is basically a quart. So it's about a quart and a half, I believe, is what we used um, to fill this. And um, we use 10W30, which is what it recommends in the manual. And um, you have your dipstick here, so you can test how much is in there. Um, they do include a funnel, so you're not gonna spill the oil everywhere. And ultimately, that worked pretty well. In terms of um, moving this around, you have these large arms that actually come up here, and you obviously have two of them, and this will allow you to just simply lift this up and utilize those wheels in the front. And in my case, I'll usually just keep it stored right here, and if I was to go run this, I'll just move it out back here and behind in my yard, and then I can run this cord all the way from back here inside and up into my, my, uh, my plug. 
So um, overall, this thing is an absolute beast. I did want to cover one other thing that you may want to do because when I originally got this, one of my concerns was that um, we actually have, I'll just kind of show my, my setup here and I'll walk around the house. We actually have a, um, a gas boiler um, that's separate, uh, a whole separate boiler that's in the back here. And this actually heats our garage. I'll kind of show you my property so you have some idea uh, of what's going on. So if I walk up to the front of my driveway here, um, my house is over here on the right. So this is basically a standard like three bedroom house. And um, to, you know, traditionally with something like this, obviously this is gonna be like a standard house not using too much power, but we have this detached garage with a apartment above it. So this is the garage. The entire thing is heated. I have a um, whole separate room there in the end and this finished apartment above. So if everybody's doing stuff right in the winter time, let's say we've got all the mini splits on using a lot of electricity, maybe there's a dryer going, something like that, we're gonna be using a lot of power. So um, what I decided to do is our main, um, our main breaker is actually in the basement over on this corner of the house. So what I did is I hired an electrician and they came in and we were gonna install a manual transfer switch. But what I wanted to do is future-proof myself, so if we decided to upgrade it in the future to a standby generator, this would allow us to um, do that. So what I did is I installed a um, automatic transfer switch, and this actually has a capability. Um, if you take this off, I'm not gonna do that right now. There's a small, um, almost like pencil style um, switch that you can put into a plug and it will act as a manual transfer switch. So you can flip this down. This basically will shut off all the power coming from the grid and now I can go connect my generator um, to, that, um, to that 50 amp connection right to the generator, run that and run the entire house. Now, because we heat with things like this Mitsubishi Electric, if we had a really harsh winter day, maybe it's like negative two degrees out here. I'm actually in New England, so we, it gets pretty cold here in the winter time. We might be running this. We have a pellet stove that heats our basement. Um, we also have an oil, um, an oil furnace in the basement here so sometimes if it's really cold we'll run all three just to really heat the place and then of course i have the natural gas actually running over in the main part of that garage so if we were to lose power it's going to be pretty detrimental to to our setup so i wanted to suggest maybe putting something like this in the automatic transfer switch along with the generator um, that's going to basically allow you to have the future proofing capability without, you know, going the extra mile and having the electrician do like a manual transfer switch that you would later have to then upgrade to an automatic transfer switch. Um, so anyway, I hope that helps you guys and gives you some idea of what to expect. Um, pretty much the main setup obviously would be having that electrician come in. Um, making sure you have the correct cable, you've got your 50 amp, you have your manual or automatic transfer switch, and then of course, um, you've set this all up. Now, one thing I did also wanna point out is I have a electric meter that um, allows me to monitor what's happening for electric usage. So I'll actually pull this up, it's called Span. This allows me to see what the house is using for electricity. So this is a pretty standard day. It's not super cold out. So we're probably not even using that much electricity right now. You can see the whole house is using about 2,700 watts. So if right now the power were to go out, I would actually only need um, to run this generator um, you know, very minimally, right? It would only be using about a quarter of the power. And you could see where it all breaks down. The water heater's using quite a bit right now. The garage is using about a thousand and then everything else is taking up little bits like lights and outlets and things like that throughout the house and the kitchen, things of that nature. So this is gonna be more than enough unless you decided to run like two dryers or go absolutely crazy with power, um, that generator is gonna be way more than enough for the most average of homes. So anyway, I hope that helps and um, hope you guys found this useful. Thanks for um, you know taking a look, and um, I'll talk to you later.